Hey everyone, welcome into the Fantasy Bros Football Podcast. I'm Bobby Sylvester, joined as always by Mike Taglier. And today we've got our start set show for week four. Tags, how's it going, man? It's good, dude. It's a, it's really good. I mean, it's weird knowing that we have bye weeks here, but bye weeks are like the best thing ever because it means it's one less game that I have to write up. And it just <laughs> and this week, by the way, like it just happens that this is probably the best week ever because I didn't have to write up the Jets or the 49ers, which is that's always a bonus. Yeah, that's definitely nice. Both those teams are uh, are pretty hard to deal with in fantasy. You know, Tex, I got to ask you a question, okay? So I was talking to someone who lives across the country and they've never heard of gooey butter cake. Is that like a thing? Like people in California have never eaten gooey butter? You know what it is, right? Gooey butter cake? You're messing with me, aren't you? I'm not, really. I mean, like... Dude, it's like if you go to anything in the St. Louis area, there's always gooey butter cake. Like it's the number one thing. That's like the actual name for it? Yeah. You, are you serious? You're not messing with me, are you? No, I'm not messing with you at all. Like I've eaten like butter cookies and stuff like that before, but I've never heard, I've never even heard that, what that, what that is. Oh man. I wanted to come on here and shame this person who's never tried gooey butter cake. It is incredible. It's like only a St. Louis thing, but it's the best dessert <laughs> there is. Everyone look up gooey butter cake and make this. You're going to be a hero in your house. Just send me one in the mail and I'll, and I'll try it. I don't know if that's a good idea. No, it was no, it was terrible though. By the way, Bobby, is that I, I it, for those who didn't tune into the live stream that we had uh, yesterday, we we do a live stream every Tuesday talking about the waiver wire on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash fantasy pros. Uh, but on that, I had the the, the face tattoo on that I lost to that right, <laughs> and then I had to record a podcast with our buddy Sigmund Bloom right after, and I didn't know his was going to be on video, so I actually wore that stupid tattoo through another live show after we were done with our our live stream. Beastin, man. Oh, it was terrible. Like that's <laughs> I, I like double paid the bet, which was terrible. That's awesome. We've got another bet later today that's going to be a lot of fun. We'll tell you guys about that in just a moment. We need to talk about the Melvin Gordon news that he might come back on Thursday. Wouldn't play in week four. But if you have a, if you've got Melvin Gordon, what would you trade him for right now? And if you need a running back, what would you offer for Melvin Gordon? Oh, that's a that's a good question. Um, to me, I didn't really even think about the Melvin Gordon aspect. I thought more about the like, what do you do with Austin Eckler and like, what's his trade value right now? Because in one league that I have Melvin Gordon, I haven't considered trading him. I haven't received any offers or anything like that, so I haven't really thought about it. Like, I probably would accept someone like Leonard Fournette or Carry On Johnson for him because I'm guessing he probably lost part of his role. I mean. Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson have looked fantastic. And it's not to say that Melvin Gordon's not going to come back in and be a great running back. He is. It's a great situation to be a part of. But the, the fact that he's not going to play this week, like he can't play this week, even if he reports tomorrow, and then he can come back, to, like start in week five, there's still questions about whether or not his role is going to be what it used to be. So it, I'd rather take a running back that, you know, is going to get that is locked into carries that I know he's going to be on the field. That's where I'm at. But the real question, I'm, I'll ask you is what is Austin Eckler's value? Because Austin Eckler is a guy that in, in one league I have Melvin Gordon and I I'm, I'm, I just threw a trade offer out. I'm probably going to get rejected. But I was like, with all this news, I'm going to try and buy Eckler now. I, I threw out there Tariq Cohen and Greg Olson to a guy that needs a tight end. But I expect it to get rejected. But I want to see what the value is out there out there on Austin Eckler right now. Because if you only have one more week of startability and then he goes back to that, you know, that flex RB3 type player, should people be selling him? I'd be selling him, man. I would trade him right now for LaShawn McCoy. Wow. I mean, me personally, I'm going to wait at least one more week because Eckler, he gets the Dolphins this week and he's going to be like, I mean, I'm, I'm ranking him as like a top two running back. So, I mean, he's a must play. I mean, I understand that he is definitely in my top five for this week, but you have to look at what he did last week as well. He had nine carries. They start to give the ball to Justin Jackson a lot more. And obviously that's going to happen in Miami when they're up three, four touchdowns like we're expecting. Wow. Well, I mean, when Gordon comes back, so you think when Gordon comes back, it's going to go back to the same exact timeshare? I think it's going to go back to what we saw last year because it's not like Austin Eckler wasn't great last year. Justin Jackson wasn't great last year. It's that Melvin Gordon is a freaking superstar. He missed four games last year and he was still the RB7. He had the third most fantasy points per game behind just Gurley and Saquon Barkley. I mean, we're talking about a superstar. You don't, you don't do a committee with Melvin Gordon. I, I, I think Austin Eckler is going to return to his role, and that's fine. He's a flex play every week. I love it. But right now, he's got a lot more value than that. You can trade him for someone like Stephon Diggs. I've seen that all over the place. Hey, man, should I trade? A, I got offered this trade. What should I do? I've seen that like three times today. That's a perfect trade. Yeah, I've seen people dropping Diggs, which is just crazy. Not in my leagues. Not in my leagues, but I'm here. I'm seeing people on my timeline saying they're dropping Diggs, and they're doing this. I'm like, don't do that. Um, Don't. 
And I'm also seeing people buying Devontae Adams based on our advice, uh, selling Mike Evans. There were there were legitimately three people yesterday I talked to that were able to trade Mike Evans away for Devontae Adams. Holy cow, man. That's a haul. You know, the funny thing is, like, every time I post some of this advice on Twitter, people are like, dude, nobody's actually that stupid. And then I get, like, 50 people who are like, hey, I pulled this off in my league. Like, there's there's a big difference in family and friends leagues and the competitive leagues that some of you guys play. And so just understand when we tweet some of that out, maybe it's not for you. Maybe it is for you. Um, but there's a lot of people who play in less competitive leagues. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's a good point to make. All right, Tags, we're going to move into the start set advice here in just a moment. But first, I want to tell you guys about Fantasy Draft. The Rake Free Revolution is here, and it's available only on Fantasy Draft. Rake, commission, management fee, call it what you want, but the days of paying 10, 12, or even 15% of your entry fees to the house are over. Now you can play Rake Free only on Fantasy Draft, where 100% of the entry fees are paid to contest winners. That's right. Every single dollar in entry fees are paid to contest winners on Fantasy Draft. To access Fantasy Draft's exclusive Rake Free contest, all you need to do is become a member. Fantasy Draft offers membership plans suitable to all levels of play, including the free player's first plan that allows for $100 in rake-free entries per month. And for a limited time, Fantasy Draft is offering a free 7-day trial on your first $1,000 in rake-free entries with their starter plan. As other sites continue to raise rake, price pools are being squeezed more and more, making it harder for players like you to win. Those days are over. No more do you have to lose up to 30% of your bankroll to rake. That money goes straight to the prize pool on Fantasy Draft. It's time to start playing your favorite contest rake-free on Fantasy Draft. Your bankroll is going to love it. Register at FantasyDraft.com today with promo code FANTASYPROS, all one word, to receive a free 7-day trial on your first $1,000 in entry fees. That's FantasyDraft.com, promo code FANTASYPROS, to claim your free 7-day trial. Void where prohibited, must be 18 or older. Tags, I still can't believe you haven't heard of gooey butter cake, man. Like, I don't know what to do with that. No, seriously. I thought you were kidding. I, I didn't, I've never heard of it. And the funny thing is, like, the people listening who know that I like butter on my pizza and stuff, they're like, this has to be a joke. It's a real thing, and it really is my favorite dessert. It's everyone's favorite dessert who's ever tried it. <laughs> I've never had it, so I, 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 I mean, I'd be willing to try it. All right, man, I'll make you some. Uh, let's go start sit. We'll start at the running back position. Uh, for those of you new to this episode that we do every week, we're not going to talk about the guys that you start every week. Mark Ingram, Joe Mixon, even in a bad matchup, you start Joe Mixon, right? Ann Johnson, even in a bad game script, you start him. Let's talk about some guys on the fringe here, Tags. And one that I've got locked in to my top 20 is Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson had over 1,000 rushing yards last year. And this is going to be maybe his best game script of the season. And you've said the Giants have a terrible defense. You're exactly right. It's awful. If you're not playing Adrian Peterson this week, why do you even own him? This is his ceiling. This is the best case scenario for Adrian Peterson. I think you should be starting him. Uh, Through three games, the Giants have faced 26, 26, and 27 carries. This is, again, the ideal scenario for you to play Adrian Peterson. I have him ranked as the number 21 running back, and that's in half PPR. So if you're in a standard format, he would he would go even higher. Uh, but this is the type of volume you're looking for. It, it also seems like Alec Ogletree, their best linebacker, is going to be out for this game for the Giants. So that just helps the matchup even more. So, yeah, Peterson is an RB2 this week and one that you should have in your lineup over guys like David Montgomery, over guys like Devonta Freeman. I would agree with that. I'm going to throw in a couple more names. Philip Lindsay against the Jags, Sony Michelle against Buffalo. I would start Adrian Peterson over either of them as well. Who do you have as a start this week, Tegs? Uh, Justin Jackson. Uh, he's another guy. I would start Justin Jackson over David Montgomery this week. And I know that people are going to be like, what? But um, I have Justin Jackson ranked as the number 22 running back. Like, I'm, I'm in on him this week. It's kind of like it goes back to the idea that Tony Pollard last week when I talked about him on our, our start uh, sit show that I felt like he could have been like an RB3 flex play last week. And I feel a similar way about Justin Jackson. And the reason is because the Dolphins have faced an average of 37 uh, touches by running backs. <laughs> <laughs> per game this year and that's it's, it's going to happen that way with them just because they're, they're always going to be on the negative game script and uh you know the chargers will control the ball in this 33.7 of those touches have been carries okay going back to the start of 2018 no running back including melvin gordon has totaled more than 19 carries for the chargers so therefore even if austin eckler gets up to that max you know 18 19 carries which i expect him to that still leaves 15 for jackson absolutely and justin jackson has been averaging just under nine yards per carry he's looked fantastic he might even be getting goal line carries considering eckler you know fumbled in the detroit game he fumbled in the preseason on the goal line and again justin jackson's looked really good so i have justin jackson as like a low-end rb2 high-end rb3 for this game and it's not just volume either because the dolphins have allowed 5.3 yards per carry 
that, that's the third most in the league. So uh, yeah, Justin Jackson is a phenomenal play this week. That's exactly. I've got him at number 22 as well, but I mean, let's keep in mind the stats he's been putting up against Indianapolis, Detroit, and Houston. Like, that's no easy go. He's been absolutely dominant. If he's getting 15 touches against Miami, why do we have him number 22? Are we being too conservative? Well, I mean, the ECR on him is 32, so I'm like 10 spots higher than the consensus, which is nuts to me. Like, I don't understand why people are starting guys. Uh, like, even even Wayne Gallman. I wouldn't start Gallman over Justin Jackson this week. Right, even against Washington. With, yeah, with the uncertainty. We don't know. Uh, but what I do know is that Tony Pollard, before he played the Dolphins, he had 46 yards on 17 carries. That's what I do know. And then Tony Pollard walked into that game as a freaking superstar. 103 yards on 13 carries with a touchdown. People are talking about him as a breakout star and this and that guys it's the dolphins like legitimately i'm not this is not me exaggerating there was probably a compact car that you could drive through some of the holes that the cowboys offensive line cleared for ezekiel elliott and tony pollard last week uh that's no exaggeration so uh yeah justin jackson and austin eckler should go bananas like honestly like if they don't rush for 200 yards in this game they're doing something wrong yeah, I would agree with that. In fact, I think you could even get away with playing Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson in cash game lineups. And Tags, we have our DFS show that comes out on Thursday nights. So if you guys are new to DFS or you want to get into DFS, check out our DFS show that we record on Thursdays. And uh, we'll be giving a lot of cash game GPP advice for FanDuel and DraftKings. And we've even got a contest going on that we're going to be talking about. Um, so Tags, we both love Justin Jackson. We both love Adrian Peterson. Who do you not love this week? Duke Johnson. I've got him 36 He's at home against Carolina. Yeah, I have him at 39. I don't like him at all. Um, he's basically a game script guy right now, and he, he's going to rely on the, the Texans falling behind in a big way in order to get a lot of snaps. And uh, Oh, he had two carries last week, man. Two receptions. It's going back to the Browns days. I mean, maybe there's a reason that Duke Johnson doesn't get a whole lot of snaps. I don't know what that reason is. I can't answer it. But now this is the second team that's doing the same thing to him. And, I mean, Carlos Hyde did look good the first couple weeks. Uh, like, we'll see how this timeshare, like, works out no, now that, you know, Hyde last week week had just uh 19 yards on 10 carries so like it wasn't a good week for him uh but duke johnson losing like deshaun watson does not check down he just doesn't do it he holds onto the ball too long because he's looking down the field like he refuses to just dump the ball down when he probably should more often uh but in this game i don't i mean they're favored against the the panthers they are at home there's just for me duke johnson's a sit until we we see a reason that we need to start him Sure, I think that's a good way to put it, man. I'm, I'm thinking I might have him a little bit too high. And that's why we have these conversations throughout the week is, you know, to adjust our rankings so we can give the best advice before lineups do lock. I think you're right. I think he belongs outside the top 36. Is there anybody else that you've got outside your top 36 that a lot of people would typically be playing? I mean, typically, Chris Thompson's a guy that I've said has value, but this is an Adrian Peterson week uh, where, where Chris Thompson's someone that I really don't want to start if I don't have to. Uh, the Giants, no running back has caught more than three balls in the first three weeks against them, and that's a lot of it comes down to game script, and Washington is now 0-3. Jay Gruden is coaching to save his life, and you know, taking the ball out of Case Keenum's hands wouldn't be the worst thing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say that Thompson is not somebody that I would want to start this week. So I don't want to talk about the Kansas City Chiefs backfield because, you know, it just depends on what happens with the injury report going into the week. Um, Devin Singletary, same thing. We don't know if he's playing. If he does play, I guess he's probably not even a good start against the Patriots. I don't think he's playing either. But there's a couple guys that are on this back end fringe. I want to know if you like any of them, okay? Jamal Williams outtouched Aaron Jones last week, but he gets Philadelphia. Tariq Cohen is not playing as much. He gets Minnesota at home, but it's Tariq Cohen. He was the top 15 running back last year in fantasy. And then Latavius Murray at home against Dallas. Is he going to turn it around? Are we cutting him? What do you do with him? Murray's droppable. Yeah, he's droppable. I think so too. Yeah. Uh, when he's in the game, they're not throwing the ball basically. And uh, he only had two carries last week. They're not going to be in scoring position a whole lot with Bridgewater under center. Um, this, this offense just needs to be built around Alvin Kamara right now. And Teddy Bridgewater had an average depth of target of 3.3 yards last week, which was the lowest of a quarterback all season long. Um, he's a check down machine. And uh, th they need to build around Kamara because that's a guy that can make it happen after the catch. So yeah, Latavius is droppable if you want to, knowing that Breeze isn't going to be back for another five to seven weeks. If you need to, I mean, he still has big time upside. If Alvin Kamara gets hurt and Drew Brees comes back, Latavius Murray's an RB1. But it's five to seven weeks. That's a long time to hold on to somebody like that. Yeah, it is, it is a long time. You're absolutely right. Especially with bye weeks coming up. Like we're into bye week season now. And that's why I'm saying he's droppable, but he's definitely not startable against Dallas. 
Uh, so no, he's not someone, a uh, Tariq Cohen is a guy that, yeah, I I'm okay with him as like, when we get into the conversation of guys like Royce Freeman, guys like, you know, Daryl Williams or Rex Burkhead, these are all guys that there are no sure thing, right? Like they're, they're in timeshares. They're all in timeshares because once you get outside the top, maybe 24, 25 running backs, it's like that. So why not take a chance on someone like a Tariq Cohen who can pay off in one play? He's involved in the passing game. Is it a timeshare there? Yeah, absolutely it is. Uh, but they're trying to dumb down the offense a little bit. And knowing that Taylor Gabriel suffered a concussion at the end of the game on Monday night, it's it's probably unlikely that he's going to have a turnaround that allows him to get on the field for this one. So there's more targets to go around in the offense. So uh, Tariq Cohen is someone that if you want to put him in the flex spot, I have no issue with that. By the way, I feel like I should probably apologize about Latavius Murray, who was one of my favorite uh, draft draft guys. And I know some of you at home who drafted him aren't laughing, so I'm sorry. But I mean, we can't predict injuries to Drew Brees, dude. Right, right. And that's yeah, that's what it is. All right. A couple other guys on the fringe here. Tell me which of these three you would prefer. Kenyon Drake against the Chargers. Peyton Barber at the Los Angeles Rams. Rex Burkhead at the Bills. Give me Kenyon Drake. I debated Burkhead for a second, but knowing James White's back, Sonny Michelle got a vote of confidence from Bill Belichick today in an interview uh, saying that he's done a good job with what they've asked him to do. So I'm going to go with Drake here. He did have 15 touches last week. Uh, Kalen Balaj continues to be crap and he's just terrible. Eventually they're going to realize to just stop giving them the ball. They're going to maybe promote Mark Walton up the depth chart, but Kenyon Drake in that matchup because the Chargers, if there's anywhere they struggle, it's on the ground. I mean, their secondary has like been decimated. They, I mean, they have one starter left in their secondary, but uh, I'm going to go with Kenyon Drake here because Rosen at least looked more competent last week. I mean, there was, there was a couple drops actually by Dolphins wide receivers that the, the game couldn't, it would have looked better for Rosen and the entire Dolphins offense had they you know, held on to those passes. So I'll go with Drake here. Tex, what franchise is more cursed? The Chargers or the Falcons? They both just get so many injuries every year. Yeah, it's gotta be the Chargers, man. Like they've <laughs> on both sides of the ball, they've just been like decimated. I yeah, that team should have they should have been a Super Bowl contender. I don't I don't know if they are anymore though. Yep, I agree with that. Tags, I've got Drake from that trio as well. Now we're gonna get to uh two more trios here before we move on to wide receivers. But first I want to tell you about Manscaped. Support for the Fantasy Pros football podcast comes from Manscaped, who is number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. For everyone who listened to the preseason show, you've already heard this, but there's a lot of new listeners, so I'm going to tell them again, okay? So I had a buddy in college. We were going down for spring break. We were all waiting for him, like, what is this guy doing taking so long? So I went in, and he had a below-the-belt shaving accident, let's just say, And just like mangled his manhood. So we were really late because of it. Don't be that guy, folks. That's why we've got Manscaped. They redesigned the electric trimmer. Their lawnmower 2.0 has the proprietary skin safe technology. So the trimmer won't nick or snag your nuts. Manscaping accidents are finally a thing of the past. And don't just use the same trimmer on your face as you're using on your balls, guys. That's nasty. Manscaped also has the crop preserver and anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You're already putting deodorant on your armpits. Why aren't you putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code FANTASYPROS, all one word, at manscaped.com. Always use the right tools for the job. Your balls will thank you. Again, you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code FANTASYPROS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the promo code FANTASYPROS. All right, Tags, let's go three more running backs here. Miles Sanders still in that timeshare against Green Bay. In fact, in Green Bay. Wayne Gallman against Washington. And let's go also go with Royce Freeman against Jacksonville at home. Oh, uh, I have Sanders and Gallman right next to each other in my rankings. So um, it's weird to say, but I think Gallman might be the safer play. If you're chasing upside, I'd say Sanders. But uh, if, I, if you want to play it safe, I'd say Gallman just because I mean, against Washington, Washington, the strength of that defense is probably like the front four they have there, uh, whereas the secondary has been like beat up. But Gallman can catch passes. It's it's really tough with that one. But Sanders, knowing that he fumbled twice last week, I know he only lost one of them, but knowing he fumbled twice, there could be repercussions for that. And uh, I mean, Jordan Howard has played well against the Packers in his career. So like there's some questions about Miles Sanders. I guess I go Gallman, but it's really close. Man, there's a theme here in today's show. Every single running back has major question marks. Like there is nobody. That's why Justin Jackson's at 22 for me, man, because I, I I don't have questions about him. I have questions about like David Montgomery who had 13 carries last week. Sure. But a lot of them came late in that game. It's against Minnesota. It's a tough matchup. Devonta Freeman's been pretty bad and he has a terrible matchup against Tennessee this week. So 
Yeah, there's a lot of question marks outside the top 22. All right, Zach's final trio here. Sony Michelle at the Bills, getting so many questions about him. David Montgomery face Minnesota, and we'll go with James White at Buffalo. James White, hands down. Really? Okay. I have him as a top 20 play this week. Interesting. All right. Dude, with Edelman dinged up, uh, James Devlin is out. He, he was placed on injured reserve, which is going to hurt Sony Michelle in the run game altogether. But knowing that you know Julian Edelman is still a question mark to play this week, even if he does play, he's playing through some sort of rib injury that we don't know what it is uh, because they're tight-lipped about it. Uh, Philip Dorsett is a field stretcher, but Buffalo doesn't allow uh, big plays in the passing game. Tredavious White is going to be matched up with Josh Gordon. There's just so many reasons that that lend to James White in the passing game this week. Welcome back to the offense, buddy, because we're going to need you. So, Tex, we've got our Who Should I Start tool, fantasypros.com slash NFL slash start. And you can just type in the three players here, right? Okay, so I'm going to type in James White, Sony Michelle, and David Montgomery. I just want to see. Okay, so right now, Sony Michelle is recommended as a start out of these three by 61% of experts. James White at 27%. David Montgomery at 12%. I think you're right. I've got James White there, but I was shocked to hear you say it, but just because I'm looking at ECR and James White is third out of this group. Wow. I mean, that's that's kind of crazy to me. I mean, I, I know that Sony Michelle, it, like the hate might be too much on his end, uh, but the Bills are a really good defense. The Patriots are on the road for this game. Uh, going into Buffalo is never an easy thing to do. But one of the things that does like lend Sony Michelle some, some credit this week is that if we go back to the start of 2017, that was when Sean McDermott took over the team. That's his defense. Okay. They allowed 18 rushing touchdowns in 2017, the most in the NFL. And then we go... Look, look at last year. They allowed a ton of touchdowns. They've already allowed touchdowns this year. They have now allowed, in 35 games under Sean McDermott, they have allowed 36 rushing touchdowns. So an average of just over one rushing touchdown per game, and knowing that Sonny Michelle is getting those goal line carries, that's kind of important. And again, without Julian Edelman and some of the passing game options, they're probably going to go to Michelle on the goal line. So we have to assume the Patriots are going to score points. And if they do, Sonny Michelle's in a good spot to score. I just think if he doesn't score, he's really going to be a big bust. So I have him in the RB3 territory. I get it, but I think James White's safer. Tex, have we disagreed on anything yet on today's show? I don't think so, man. Yeah, this is weird, dude. It is. <laughs> All right, Tags, on to wide receiver, baby. Who do you like as a start this week? Keenan Allen. <laughs> <laughs> is he your number one wide receiver? I've got Devontae Adams there. I have I have Keenan as my number one. Um, I have Devontae at number two, so, I mean, I like them both, obviously, but uh, that, that was obviously a joke. You're starting Keenan Allen every week. But um, of some of the players that people might have, like, thought about, um, I mean, Terry McLaurin is, like, my number 17 wide receiver this week. Dang, man. I thought I had him high. I've got him at 23. I'm a believer. Uh, I, I've, I've gotten past it, man. Like the dude's just getting it done. He's he's now seeing 24 targets, which is a close to a 20% target share from Keenum. But 47.1% of the team's air yards ranks third at the wide receiver position. That's a great indicator of future success. Um, he just posted top 24 numbers against both the Cowboys and the Bears. Two teams that combined to allow just 20 wide receivers to hit 14... 0.9 PPR points against them last year. Like they combined to allow that. And he's done it in each of the last two weeks. Now going up against the Giants, the Giants who have, by the way, allowed uh, seven different wide receivers to post 12 or more PPR points already against them. We've seen three 100 yard performances from Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, Mike Evans. I mean, this is to save your job. And even if Case Keenum were to somehow get benched against uh, Dolphins light, we don't see that happening. But even if he did, that means Dwayne Haskins comes in, a guy who has chemistry with Terry McLaurin because they played at college. I'm playing Terry McLaurin this week. I really don't even care like who I'm deciding between. I'm playing him. Yeah. Okay. So you started him over Stephon Diggs? Yeah, I have him over Diggs this week. Yeah, I've got him over Diggs against Chicago. What about Calvin Ridley face the Titans? Oh, I mean, you play Ridley. <laughs> I mean, Ridley, I have at 15. I'll play McLaurin over Ridley, man. I have Ridley at 15 this week. So I like I like Ridley quite a bit. Um, He's he's higher in my rankings than most think. But no matter what. I mean, he had one target last week, man. That doesn't worry you? It Well, it doesn't worry me because I, he goes up against Tennessee top five pass defense last year. I don't buy that. I mean, they, I mean, they were in just just in terms of fantasy points allowed to opposing wide receivers. It, it more comes down to the the matchups that they have with Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley against these cornerbacks because Adoree Jackson, he might be a phenomenal athlete, but he doesn't have the agility that Ridley does. Ridley doesn't rely on speed to get over the top of players. He does on route running and Adoree Jackson doesn't have that underneath. So it's like if, if they bracket Julio, which, by the way, they need to do something about that because Julio will destroy 
destroy you if you continue to let him run in single man coverage. Uh, but Calvin Ridley, this is a team, Tennessee plays a lot of man coverage and he just crushes man like over the course of Ridley's career he has like over a, like when he's targeted in man coverage he has over a 150 quarterback reading by the way the highest you can go is 158.3 whereas zone coverage he's just above average like just slightly above average so he's much better against man coverage something that Tennessee runs quite a bit so uh I'm gonna buy Ridley this week I, I like him as a wide receiver too you're talking me into it, man. I mean, it's not like I was going to sit Calvin Ridley, but I'm just saying between Terry McLaurin and Ridley, I, I still think I like McLaurin a little bit better. You're starting both of them. That's basically where I'm at with this. <laughs> yeah, they're both in your top 20, so that's pretty obvious. I don't understand why Marvin Jones isn't a must start against Kansas City and ECR. Like I'm looking at it right now. I can't. He's he's wide receiver 38. So that's on the fringe A flex play for a lot of guys. A lot of people would recommend sitting him. Marvin Jones against Kansas City, guys, he went for 101 yards, nine targets last week. Um, he had more targets, more yards, more touchdowns than Kenny Galladay and Golden Tate while they were all there. He was the number one. Now, granted, I think Galladay's taken over as the number one. That's pretty clear on their target share, but this is going to be a great week for Detroit's passing game. Why would you not play Marvin Jones? Yeah, like Kenny Galladay I have is like a top 10 play this week. I like him. I have his number nine wide receiver in my rankings, so I'm high on Galladay. Uh, Marvin Jones, there could be room for both of them, absolutely. Uh, this is a game where I saw something on Twitter. I did not even realize it until I, I read the tweet and I went through and it, it, makes, it, it adds up. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, this is going to be the first game that he's ever played in a dome in the NFL. And... Uh, Domes typically produce bigger results, especially when you play uh, like as fast as the Chiefs do, as much speed as they have on the field. So you're saying 10 touchdowns going into Well, I mean, the last time Mah <laughs> the, the stat that the guy threw out there, I can't remember who it was, but he said the last game he played in a dome, Mahomes threw for like 600 yards and six touchdowns in a game. Like it was a Texas Tech, so whatever. But at the same time, like I think this game has sneaky shootout potential all over the place. And I think that extends to the Lions, uh, to their posi like skill position players. So uh, I have... Marvin Jones is a wide receiver three because I like Galladay so much in terms of what they can go and like the way they th can attack this defense. But Marvin Jones, I mean, he showed last week, he still got it. And I said, after the first two weeks, I was like, I know the numbers aren't there, but Marvin Jones has looked good and he continues to look good. So uh, wide receiver three. Absolutely. Yeah. I've got him wide receiver 30 right now, by the way, I don't think it's possible to have sneaky shootout potential in any game Patrick Mahomes plays in man <laughs> that's true I mean I, I think this game has like legit like 60 70 point potential like dang we haven't we haven't had a chance to see like Stafford go toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone like uh Patrick Mahomes uh inside of Dome and knowing that Stafford's been a top seven fantasy quarterback three straight years before he played with a fractured back last year yep and the thing is like Stafford has looked better they didn't have to throw the ball a whole bunch against Philadelphia so it, it naturally it brought down like in terms of what his ceiling could have been and I think that's what people are going to be down on this week saying well he played Philly last week and it wasn't like great well that's because the Eagles didn't put enough points on the board the Chiefs are not going to have an issue doing that <laughs> and uh yeah so I'm I'm like legitimately trying when it comes to our DFS show, I'm sure we're going to talk about that game quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, if you're in season long leagues and you're deciding between someone like Marvin Jones and uh, even I would start Marvin Jones probably over someone like Tyrell Williams. Me too. It's close, but like I would start Marvin Jones over DK Metcalf. I, even though Metcalf's still a good play. What about Christian Kirk face Seattle? No, you're playing Kirk. I have him at 25. Okay. That team. So Seattle might be without, both of their starting safeties, Tedrick Thompson and Bradley McDougal, and they're already struggling. They had to bring back Jamar Taylor to cover the slot. And the, the, the Cardinals offense, what it does is it tests the depth of your roster because when you when you go four wide it's either you have to bring another cornerback onto the field or you have to bring a safety down to cover you're not going to do it with a linebacker right so when you have Jamar Taylor as your starting nickel cornerback that's a problem in itself because that guy's going to be asked to cover Larry Fitzgerald but when they go four wide with Kirk and Fitzgerald in the slot it's like now what do we do and Kirk's going to be matched up with a safety more often than not there's a big week coming for him like Christian Kirk is one of the better buy lows in fantasy football right now because he has more targets than Fitzgerald. He just hasn't caught the touchdowns yet. They're coming, and it might be this week because, I, I, again, I am starting Kirk as a borderline wide receiver two. He's a high-end wide receiver three at worst. We're not going to have any trouble picking wide receivers this week in DFS. We've had some some struggles in the past few weeks, but this week there's so many good matchups for undervalued guys. I am sitting here drooling right now, man. What, one of them, by the way, again, I, I don't understand. Marquez Valdez-Scantling is just wide receiver 41 in ECR. Can, can you explain this? I'm not following. 
it really comes down to the, the, the Packers offense and can they support two top 36 wide receivers in one week? And they haven't shown the ability to do that just yet. Well, yeah, Chicago, Minnesota, Denver. Right. And I mean, that's 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 the part of it. But another part of it is could be because Matt LaFleur refuses to keep his pedal on the metal. Uh, where it's like, you know, if they jump out to a lead, Green Bay is going to take their foot off the throttle and they're going to run the ball. It's what they're going to do under Matt LaFleur. If they do that, they're going to lose to the Philadelphia Eagles. I would I would agree with you. Um, now, but the Eagles, like obviously missing Deshaun Jackson, they might have a little bit of trouble putting points up on the Packers defense because like they need they need big plays because the Packers are going to bring the pressure. Um, Alshon Jeffrey is going to be playing, but it seems like he might be less than 100%. Uh, but I like Devontae Adams so much that it's lowered Valdez Scantling down my rankings. Like I have him at, at wide receiver. 38 wow okay I don't I don't hate him or anything like that I think he's like a borderline wide receiver three or a low end three but if you were deciding between someone like him and DK Metcalf that's where I'd have somewhat of an issue because Metcalf's ceiling is probably bigger considering the offense that he's playing in and the matchup that he has I mean they're not going to throw the ball 46 times again Russell Wilson averages like 24 passes a game it was just the game script but that's the thing Russell Wilson is on pace now for 560 attempts this year like that's kind of like an underrated thing um he's throwing the ball more that's why Disley's producing that's why Lockett's producing DK Metcalf is producing Chris Carson now fumbling the ball like they may like not put the ball in his hands as much as they have been you know so uh this might be turning into more of a pass heavy Seahawks offense and I mean, it's hard to disagree with them because it's working because Russell Wilson is really friggin' good at football. Yes, he is. Metcalf has six, seven, six targets in the first three weeks. And remember, he's he's still recovering from that surgery he had just a few weeks ago. So I think he's going to get better as the season goes on. I've got Metcalf as a start as well. Tex, let's play the game where I give you three names. You tell me who you're starting. Josh Gordon at Buffalo. Tredavious White's going to be on him. Allen Robinson face Minnesota. And then let's throw Curtis Samuel at Houston in there. I have, um, it's funny because those guys are legitimately four spots in my rankings apart. Like that's three players. There's just Marquise Brown is in the middle of them. Uh, but I have Josh Gordon as the, as the top one, just because Tredavis White is good. He is really good. Um, but he, he has had lapses before. Like he's a guy that can be beat by technicians. And Josh Gordon is a guy that can win contested catches. Brady has shown the willingness to throw to him in one-on-one situations. And the Bills do often trust Tredavious White one-on-one with wide receivers. So while I, it's, it's, it's not a matchup that I think you need to attack or anything. It's not a DFS play, but Josh Gordon against Buffalo, he's going to get targeted. Again, when we start thinking about the fact that Buffalo doesn't allow big plays to op- opponents, they're going to bring pressure to Tom Brady, who's missing some pieces on the offensive line. Uh, all these things combining into the fact that Josh Gordon's probably going to see eight targets. Like, I think that would be his floor in this game. And that, and that's worth something coming from Tom Brady, whereas Allen Robinson, he's got a tough matchup against Minnesota, against Xavier Rhodes, who maybe hasn't been great. But again, he's got Mitch Trubisky throwing him the ball. And then Curtis Samuel, I do like Samuel this week, and I like him. I, I would start him as a high-end wide receiver three, but he still has Kyle Allen throwing him the ball. I don't want to say that that's like a, a sure thing yet, whereas like at least Josh Gordon, we know that Brady's a sure thing. <laughs> I've got Curtis Samuel a little bit higher, but again, all three of these guys are really close for me, so it's just kind of... You know, that one's on you. It's a gut call. Um, They're all solid starts. I've got them all as wide receiver threes this week. I just like Samuel a little bit more. He's a superb route runner. By the way, are you worried that DJ Moore is going to kind of disappear like he did last week with Kyle Allen under center? I don't actually. Um, DJ Moore is someone that I have up in low end wide receiver two uh, conversation. Yeah, I, I just think it, it was more to do with the matchups last week and Curtis Samuel. It just kind of worked out. It, it does. If you go back to the, the game last year uh, where Kyle Allen played, he did target DJ Moore. So I, I don't think it's it, it's more like the matchup dictated it. Uh, they weren't getting pressure uh, in that matchup. Like we always knew that that one had shootout potential, whereas Houston is going to bring the pressure a little bit. And it's like, get the ball out of your hands, get it into DJ Moore hands, uh, let him do some work after the catch so um, I'm, I'm starting him without hesitation all right tags we've got two more groups of wide receivers we're going to go tight end quarterback and then dst at the end of the show before we give our start of the week our sit of the week and our stream of the week at the end of the show but first i want to tell you guys about hello fresh america's number one meal kit you can get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door And all you have to do is cook it and enjoy. And guys, this is really good food too. The first time I had HelloFresh, I was like, what's this all about? And it was delicious. And they gave me so much food that there were leftovers too. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. 
regardless of your comfort in the kitchen. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in just 30 minutes. And guys, there's something for everything from family recipes to calorie smart, vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers. You can add extra meals to your weekly orders as well as yummy add-ons like garlic bread and cookie dough. And it's easy to change your delivery days, food preferences, and skip a week, whatever you need. They're really easy to work with at HelloFresh. You know, I've had a lot of good meals from HelloFresh, but by far my favorite was their beef bulgogi. It was something I've never tried until HelloFresh sent it my way. And I wasn't especially excited about it because I just didn't know what I was getting into. But man, it was so good. I've made it at home almost every week since I tried it with HelloFresh. If you want $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash pros80 and enter the promo code pros80. That's P-R-O-S-8-0, all one word. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash pros80 and enter the promo code pros80 for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. All right, tags, next three. Sterling Shepard at home against Washington. He was very good last week. Let's go to Marcus Robinson at Detroit, and then Will Fuller face Carolina. Oh, this one's Shepard for me. Easy. Me too. Very easy. I have Shepard at 19, wide receiver 19 this week. Wow. Okay. So it, it is really easy for you. Yeah, that one. As soon as you said Shepard, I knew I was going to be saying him. Like, this is a matchup where you have to play him. Uh, it was a good matchup last week. I had him in some DFS lineups. I felt like stacking him made sense with the Tampa Bay side of things. Uh, in this game, you can pass on Washington. And the best part about it is, is that he plays in the slot 70% of the time. And uh, Josh Norman doesn't travel into the slot. Norman's not the same cornerback he used to be, but he's still their best one. Uh, instead, they have seventh round rookie Jimmy Moreland covering the slot on 12 targets. He's allowed 11 catches for 134 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Shepard is a, he's a, is seemingly a favorite of Daniel Jones and rightfully so considering the way that things went last week. So uh, yeah, Shepard is a wide receiver too this week. So what do you think about the other two, Demarcus Robinson, Will Fuller? Are they starts for you? I've got them at 36 and 37. I have Fuller as a sit, someone that I'm not trusting at all uh, this week. He's going to match up with Dante Jackson. Jackson has just as much speed as Fuller does, and Fuller hasn't been getting enough targets to justify starting him to do things underneath. Uh, so I... I don't want to start him if I don't have to. Demarcus Robinson, he's like definitely interesting. Uh, he would become more interesting if uh, all of a sudden Detroit was without Darius Slay because they'd have so many different concerns in that secondary. But if if Slay does play, he's probably going to match up with uh, Sammy Watkins most of the time, which means Robinson should still be a decent start. But I would say Demarcus Robinson over Will Fuller, but I'm still taking Shepard over Demarcus Robinson. All right, final three. This is if you're a little bit desperate. Corey Davis has a decent matchup against Atlanta. John Ross, is he going to bounce back this week against Pittsburgh on Monday Night Football? And we'll go with DJ Chark at the Denver Broncos. Oof, I don't really... I'm not in love with any of them. Like, I think John Ross might be the play here just because none of them have are high floor plays this week. And I think Ross has the highest upside. Uh, DJ Chark, if if Denver does what I think they're going to do, and that would that means that they would shadow DJ Chark with Chris Harris. So Chris Harris, the last two weeks, has shadowed Allen Robinson and uh, uh, Devontae Adams. He's held Robinson to four catches for 41 yards, Adams four catches, 56 yards. I don't think that they would waste Chris Harris on the side of the field with Chris Conley and Marquise Lee. I, I don't think they're going to do that. Uh, so I would assume they'll shadow Chark. And if that happens, it's it's like a whole lot of problems because like he's a really good cornerback. John Ross against Pittsburgh, that team has had some like issues like uh, stopping the plays down the field. I I know adding Minka Fitzpatrick obviously helped, but he at least presents like big upside. Corey Davis, I have down at wide receiver 50. I just can't trust him. Even though the matchup's not bad against Atlanta, I just can't trust him. So I guess shoot for the upside with John Ross. Any other wide receivers you want to talk about that are sneaky starts? I think everybody probably at this point is already starting Nicole Hardman. <laughs> so I don't, I don't feel the need to uh, talk about him. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's a guy that I would play if you have him. All right, Tags, let's move on over to tight end. And it looks like we're going to miss another starting tight end with Vance McDonald, you know, having his shoulder in a sling. They went out and acquired Nick Vanette for a fifth round pick and he, his contract ends at the end of the season. So like, I think this is a pretty big deal. If you've got Vance McDonald, I would plan on moving forward. There's really no one to pick up though. Like all these guys that I've got in the top 12, they're owned everywhere. And then after that, there's a major drop off. So if you need a streamer, is it Vernon Davis against the Giants? Jason Witten against New Orleans? What do you do? I mean, if Will Disley's not owned, like grab him right now. 
Well, sure. I mean, he's my tight end four this week. I have him at tight end six, so I mean, we're both high on him. But I, I think a lot of people listening might be like cautious of it. it might be like because Will Disley, he's not a household name, and a lot of people don't get that. But uh, against the Cardinals, like they've allowed T.J. Hawkinson the number two tight end performance, Mark Andrews the number one performance, Greg Olson the tight end two. Like of the top five games allowed to tight ends this year, three of them have come against the Cardinals. And that's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really stupid actually. And Will Disley has done really well. And I think that the, the trade of uh, Nick Vanette signifies that Seattle is good with him moving forward and they really do like him. Uh, so he's like now just lost a lot of competition for targets because Nick Vanette was kind of splitting snaps with him. Disley was the, obviously the favorite, but um, Disley is a, phenomenal option if he's somehow still available in your league grab him start him I don't really care who you have but one player that I I'd say that is a a sneaky start that's available in I would say 95% of leagues is Gerald Everett against Tampa Bay Tampa Bay if there's one thing that we've learned under Todd Bowles it's that they've been really good against the run like most people don't realize like Tampa Bay is the number one defense in the league against running backs right now. Did you know that? <laughs> oh no, I did not. That is funny. No, and, and the, the the craziest part about it is that they've uh, they've played against Matt Breida, Christian McCaffrey, and Saquon Barkley. I know Barkley got hurt, but knowing that and like so, Todd Gurley hasn't been playing well. So it's like okay, if they're not going to move the ball on the ground against Tampa Bay, you have to look at the cornerback matchups, and they do have good matchups at corner. But Tampa Bay, if there's one thing that's transferred over from last year, it's that their safety play they can't stop tight ends. So like. Evan Ingram last week, six catches for 113 yards and a touchdown. 90-year-old Greg Olson the week before, six catches for 110 yards. I mean, it just feels like with with Tyler Higbee likely to be out again, we have Gerald Everett running most of the routes. Uh, If you're looking for someone that, like, again, this is a guy that's available in most leagues, and he has a phenomenal matchup, I might start him over someone like Jared Cook, who I'm just tired of. Okay, I think that's definitely fair. Jared Cook gets Dallas. Jimmy Graham gets Philly. I wouldn't play either of those guys. Now, here's who I've got rounding out my top 12. Tell me if you disagree with any of these names. Darren Waller at Indianapolis. I have Waller at three. (laughs) Holy cow, okay. He's a must-play every week, every week. Okay. Yeah. Greg Olson at Houston. Delaney Walker at Atlanta. Mark Andrews faced Cleveland. O.J. Howard against the Rams. Austin Hooper faced Tennessee, Eric Ebron against Oakland. Do you dislike any of those plays? No, that's, I mean, I think we have the same exact 12 players in our top 12. So, I mean, it's, it's a, week. I would imagine most people do. Cause like I said, there's a big cutoff after that. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking for someone that could potentially be a sneaky star, it's Trey Burton uh, against Minnesota, Minnesota, like last week allowed Darren Waller, another athletic tight end. He's not really like a big physical guy, uh, but he's an athletic tight end. They allowed him to catch 13 of 14 targets. Uh, for 134 yards. I mean, going back to week one, Austin Hooper caught nine of nine targets for 77 yards. Uh, And again, going back to that whole idea that Taylor Gabriel might not play, um, there's going to be more targets to go around. So uh, Trey Burton, I have him at 13. So if he's available, he's he's someone that you could stream. He was getting more involved last week too, caught four balls. Let's go on to the quarterback position tags. What do we do with Aaron Rodgers against Philadelphia? You start him. Okay, that's that's what I'm thinking too, but I've been getting so many questions, man. Through three weeks, 13 points, 14 points, 13 points. Not good. Don't believe me. I'm worried. <laughs> uh, but but <laughs> I, I know that Philadelphia can't stop the pass right now, and they just lost their best cornerback in Ronald Darby. Not that he's great, but he's, he's their best one. That's why I like Devontae Adams so much in this game. I mean, the, the concern with Rodgers is that the upside, how much upside is there? Like, can Philadelphia put points on the board and force Green Bay to keep passing the ball? Like, that's the one question mark I have. Uh, it is a Thursday night game, which they're typically crappy. But I still have I still have Rodgers as a, a, t- a top five play this week. So I, um, I feel confident in him putting up QB1 numbers. And, I mean... Was I wrong to rank him as the number two quarterback this year? It kind of appears that way. I had more faith, I guess, in Matt LaFleur to, you know, work with the talent that he has in the team, but it's just been boring. Uh, so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to say that Rodgers is a start for sure, unless you have, you know, Patrick Mahomes or Russell Wilson, but you're, you're not going to have those guys in the same team you have Rodgers. Yeah, I can't play him over Dak Prescott, Phillip Rivers against Miami, Russell Wilson against Arizona. I mean, I've got him QB7. He's a, he's a good play this week. And then obviously, no one's asking about Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson. Who else do you have in your top 10, though? Uh, Matthew Stafford. He, he's a guy that I'm higher on than most. And um, again, I mean, the Chiefs opponents, they averaged 39.7 pass attempts against them last year. That was the most in the NFL. And I know it's early, but they're facing 38 pass attempts through three games this year. The Chiefs 
can be run on. Uh, that's the only thing that I think would hurt Stafford. But again, I expect Mahomes put up points on the board. Uh, everybody, the correlation between quarterbacks in a game is usually pretty high. So if you have Patrick Mahomes, your number one, you usually do. Usually you want to look at the other sideline and say, okay, this guy could be better than people think. And Matthew Stafford's shown the ability. He has the wide receivers to take advantage of the matchups. I think TJ Hawkinson is a guy who can get back on track this week. Again, this game, even if it had an over under of like 55 points, I think, what is it at now? I haven't seen the the total. I think it's at 50. Yeah, it was at 54 the last I checked. Um, but even if this one was at 56, I'd probably taken the over on it. So when you have a game, you know, looking to score that much points, like that many points, you want to find the quarterbacks in there. So I would start Stafford over someone like Kyler Murray or Jared Goff. I've got Murray eight. So that's it. I've got Goff at 11. What about Carson Wentz against Green Bay? Would you rather start Stafford or Wentz? I would start Stafford, um, knowing that Carson Wentz, uh, he's getting Jeffrey back and that's fine. Uh, but Jeffrey's going to be taken away by J.R. Alexander and Alexander's been really good. Who's incredible, by the way. He is a breakout star. Yeah, he's been really good. Like he was shadowing a little bit last year, had some lapses, but he was a rookie. Um, he's growing into his own. He shut down Emmanuel Sanders last week. But I just don't if Wentz had Deshaun Jackson, I would like him a lot more. Um, but he doesn't. And that's like the concerning part. So I have Wentz at QB 12. I have Stafford at QB eight. What about Matt Ryan and Daniel Jones? I've been getting a lot of questions about these guys. They're kind of on that fringe. Matt Ryan gets Tennessee. Daniel Jones has a good matchup against Washington. Yeah. I mean, I mentioned that I liked Calvin Ridley. Obviously I like Julio Jones. So, um, all that adds up to, you know, production for Matt Ryan. They're at home. Uh, he's been great at home. Tennessee stops the run extremely well. Atlanta has no run game right now. Uh, so I have Matt Ryan, uh, inside my top 10. He's a start. Daniel Jones is, is a start too, um, if you're like looking for streaming quarterbacks, because like if you have Russell Wilson or guys like that, no, you're not going to pick up Daniel Jones and start him. But uh, against what? Let's say you've got Tom Brady against Buffalo or Josh Allen against the New England Patriots or Jameis Winston against the Rams, Baker Mayfield against Baltimore. It's Daniel Jones over all of them, right? It would be. I would actually start Daniel Jones or Case Keenum over all those guys. Yeah. I would also start Andy Dalton over all those guys. Brady, I was shocked with, dude. So Brady, like... He was so I, I looked at um, ECR because I just before we started recording the show, I looked at to scene where like I, I was way off. Like I'm, I'm much higher on Matthew Stafford, uh, but Tom Brady is ranked as the number 11 quarterback. And I don't understand why against Buffalo. Yeah. Going into Buffalo. I, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, I have him down at QB 21. OK, I've got him at 18, so I'm not too far ahead of you. Yeah. Now, Tag's one guy that nobody should be starting in a one quarterback league, but we have to start this week is Gardner Minshew. Can you tell uh, our listeners a little bit about the contest that we have going on right now? Absolutely. So, by the way, guys, we just wanted to mention that FanDuel is hosting a Fantasy Pros Beat the Experts contest where you can play against me and Bobby for $2,500 in cash prizes, free FanDuel contest entries, and epic bragging rights. This contest is just $5 to enter with a first place prize of $500 and the top 25 users with the highest scores who beat both Bobby and I get a free entry into the Sunday Million Dollar Contest where you can win $1 million. So, guys, all you have to do is go to fanduel.com forward slash tags and Bobby. There is a catch to this, Bobby. We both, you and I both have to start Gardner Minshew in our lineup. And um, that sucks because he's going into Denver in a terrible matchup. But, Bobby. Yeah, but it's Gardner Minshew, man. It doesn't matter. We're going to win. What is the loser have to do like so you and I are against each other here we're both using Gardner Minshew and then we build our lineups outside of that but what does the loser have to do so last week Tags and I did a bet and uh, obviously I won that one because Tags had to wear a kitty cat tattoo on his face on our Tuesday live stream at youtube.com slash fantasy pros it was a lot of fun we had a good time with it this time our Tuesday live stream is going to have either me or Tags and Gardner Minshew because one of us is going to be dressing as Gardner Minshew with a stash aviators, maybe a a lot of chest hair showing. We'll see. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be very colorful. Hey, by the way, we're not just playing Gardner Minshew. We also have another handicap and we don't know what it's going to be yet. So Tags, why don't you pull yours up? I believe we have some kind of poem to read that's going to reveal our other handicap here. That's right. We do. Um, Let me pull it up. Oh my God. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So our social media content planner uh just he sent us an email that we couldn't open until now so james says to me you tried to create a fun challenge for fans suggesting they blow up their gpp plans the good news for you this plays virtually free 
you'll be using the Dolphins inept DST. That sounds like it's for you, Bobby. <laughs> no, that's for you. This one, this one is for me, and it might be just as bad. His preseason hype was mostly your doing, but three weeks have passed, and his owners are stewing. And so your restriction for this DFS game is to punt your tight end spot and roster Jeff Swaim. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least you have a, at least you have a tight end spot that's unpredictable to begin with. But geez, sure. I mean, you're gonna get negative points. I hopefully will get two points. Yeah, that's exactly. I, I mean, I think I. By the way, I want to tell people like I did not tell anyone to draft Jeff Swaim. He was a week one streamer against the Kansas City Chiefs, and he would have been fine. But Nick Foles got hurt, and the only reason I like Jeff Swaim was because of Nick Foles loving tight ends. <laughs> So good, man. This is gonna this is gonna suck. Gardner Minshew. And <laughs> so well, I think a lot of people are gonna beat us. Although last time tags, not too many people beat both of us. I don't know where you finished because I didn't really scroll down after me, but uh, there were not many people ahead of me last time. Oh, I I I did. I don't even know if I looked at it to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> it's like my season long teams. I don't even look at it anymore. I just do my waivers and set my lineup and I move along. But uh. Man, this is going to be fun. But yeah, again, guys, if you haven't played DFS, check it out. It's it's FanDuel.com forward slash Tags and Bobby. All right, Tags, let's finish the show off by talking about DST streamers. Obviously, the Chargers against Miami, Patriots against Buffalo, Rams, Jags, Vikings. Anybody else that's an absolute lock for you this week? I mean, those are the guys that, that are owned. I mean, you know, the Rams, are, you know, pe- the people own these defenses. But one that's probably been dropped in quite a few leagues is the Broncos uh, against Jacksonville. I mentioned that... Uh, you know, Gardner Minshew playing him is going to suck. Um, it's because Denver, so Von Miller and Bradley Chubb, the matchups at the tackle spots for the the Jags is going to be a problem for them. And it is in Denver. They know that that team, they are the first team in over 50 years to go three consecutive games without a sack or a turnover. That's ridiculous, knowing that Vic Fangio is part of that. So um, being back at home against a team that doesn't know Vic Fangio's defense, like, you know, like the Bears did back in week two, this is the week where things just don't look right for Jacksonville, and I think that Denver gets back on. I have them as a top-ten defense. The only two I wanted to mention, Indianapolis face Oakland, Pittsburgh against Cincinnati. I guess I'll mention another one just in case you can't get one of those. Uh, Green Bay, pretty much any week, but this week against Philadelphia, they're not bad either. All right, Tags, now let's give our start of the week, sit of the week, and stream of the week. These are for any position. Let's start with our start of the week. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go with Justin Jackson just because, like, I didn't want to, I don't want to give an obvious one. So I'm just going to say Justin Jackson is my start of the week. I was going to, I thought you were going to go Tara McLaurin. So I was going to go Justin Jackson. I'm going Tara McLaurin. I like it. I mean, we, we've talked about those guys. We both like them. We agreed way too much on this show. I think we could say that. All right, sit of the week. Sit of the week, uh, I'm going to go DJ Chark here. Uh, again, I just don't like the Jacksonville offense here, and I'm, so I'm going to double down on that and say that I don't like Minshew, who I'm going to have in my DFS lineup, and uh, DJ Chark I don't like. I'm going to go Tom Brady. His ECR is number 11 right now. I've got him down at 18. I don't think you can start him against Buffalo. The number one defense against quarterbacks in fantasy last season. They've been really good again this season as well. So Tom Brady's my set of the week. And now let's go with our stream of the week tags. Who do you have? Uh, I'm going to go with Paul Richardson. I've been talking about this. So ever since he joined the uh, the Redskins, he has, I want to say he's had at least five targets in all but two games with the Redskins. And and, and that's, a, that's a solid floor against the New York Giants who completely are just terrible. Uh, as I mentioned, they're Dolphins light. So, I mean, if they were playing the Dolphins this week, you would be like, hmm, which player do we want to grab? And knowing they play the Giants this week, I mean, we, we do like McLaurin, but it's very possible that Paul Richardson is, an, is a guy that also can go off in this matchup. They also have Miami on their schedule in week six. So Paul Richardson could be a guy for a couple weeks during buys uh, that could help you out. And I'm using his quarterback, Case Keenum, this week. He's 15% owned, so I understand there's there may be better quarterbacks available in your league. If you can go get Matthew Stafford, sure, pick him up. But I can almost guarantee you Case Keenum is available in a one-quarterback league. And he's the top 15 quarterback against the New York Giants defense that is just absolutely horrible. The only thing that could honestly derail that game for him is if he starts out slow and they go to Haskins. Because like it would have been like horrendous had uh, Jay Gruden decided that he was going to go with Dwayne Haskins against the Bears. That's just a, a stupid thing to do. It's what the Cardinals, by the way, did with Josh Rosen last year. That didn't work out. Um, but th- you want to bring him in on a good note. And I- if there is any way that you want to feel good about Dwayne Haskins, it's it's against the Giants. So, I mean, that could build some confidence for sure. Uh, but I just don't see any way Case Keenum struggles out of the gate. I, I'm with you. I have him as a top 15 quarterback play. 
All right, Tags, that's all for today's show, man. That was a lot of fun. Hopefully we are uh, right about everything since we agreed. Yep, and now you can listen into the DFS show tomorrow to hear all the people that we're going to be playing in our FanDuel lineups, you know, outside of, you know, Gardner Minshew and the Dolphins defense and, uh, oh, man, <laughs> and, and Jeff Swaim. So it, it's going to be terrible all the way around. All right, and I want to say thanks to the sponsors of today's show, HelloFresh. Guys, you can get $80 off your first month of HelloFresh by going to hellofresh.com slash pros80 and enter the promo code pros80. And also Manscaped, who is number one in men's below-the-belt grooming, you can get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com by entering the promo code fantasypros. And thanks also to Fantasy Draft, where the rake-free revolution is happening. Get a free seven-day trial at fantasydraft.com and enter the promo code fantasypros for a free seven-day trial on your first $1,000 in entries. And don't forget to sign up for the Beat Tags and Bobby contest at fanduel.com slash tags and Bobby. For Mike Tagliere, I'm Bobby Sylvester. Thanks for listening and enjoy your football.